Hello! <laughs> I'm so happy of being here and I confess that English talk means a really hard challenge for me. But I'm happy to have the coders to talk about technology and Golang and even more to, to prove that a woman in tech can talk about technology even in your native language is in English, okay? I talk about what I learned in coding a CLI in Golang and here is our agenda. Today we're going to talk about the Golang's project. I will show you what this project do, uh, how I built the iterative terminal, the challenge I faced, what I learned, and yeah, here we have also tiers, but we don't have a conquer of a compiler program without tiers, am I right? Okay. <laughs> so about me, first I present myself for you all. I am a software developer about five years. I began as a front-end developer, and today I'm a fully back-end developer in a video streaming platform here in Brazil called Global Play. I forgot, but I I am a Brazilian girl. <laughs> and working with video streaming was my biggest dream the last year, and I'm happy to of being enabled in my first opportunity to work with that. And I'm also a guitar player in a funny rock band here in Brazil called Tijolos Baianos. And in English it means Bahia Bricks. <laughs> Bahia is a Brazilian stage name and Bricks is that red bricks to, to build houses. <laughs> so, okay, let's go to, to the, the talk. The Golinks project is a CLI command line interface to with exercise that will teach you how to program in Go. The project have some comments like run that you will compile the file uh, with an error and you have to fix this error. And when you run the comment, the comment, uh, it will compile the file and tell you if it's okay and if it have an error. And the least common to show our exercise that are that is available to for you to edit the files and fix or hint to give you a hint about the exercise you're stuck. Like here in the video, I'm doing the variables one exercise and this file have an error and I have to fix it. So the challenge was to build a watch comment with interactive modes that I'm showing in this video. I have the variables file, I have to fix this file, and when I edit the, the command to run and compile must automatically be run it, and I can also type in terminal like this. Uh, I ask for a hint, this one. And even I type something in terminal, it must keep it running my project. So I can save again and, and it will run and try to compile the file I'm editing. So what to do? Uh, I was thinking about the order to solve the problems. And so first I built the functions to list and the file chains. And the last one, I created the iterative mode with user inputs, like that video we saw the user type in hint comment. Okay, how to list in the file chains? I worked with infinite loops, go routines, and FS notify packager. The FS notify packager is responsible for listening to operational system events notifications. So I'm going to show you first how I created the watch event functions. And we're going to use the FS notify packager here to create a watcher and receiving a channel as a pattern. Okay, we're going to iterate with this channel. But we created a watcher here, uh, and this watcher will return a struct with some methods and event structs that we can operate it. And the last one, I created a, a, a format a string to a path that I want to watch. 
This one, I used the root example, but in GoLinx it was the exercise folder. And the add, the what, the add method from our watcher that we created in the previous stage doesn't read subdirectors. So I'm here in the exercise and I'm typing in the file here inside the anonymous functions one. So it doesn't gonna work because the this edge only only listen to file changes here. So I have to enter in every folder here and add in my method. So to enter inside every folder, I gonna use the file path and walk your method. And this directory is the file path here exercise and it's gonna run every folder here and when i check if it if it is a dir i add this current dir that i mean to my watcher list that we created in the previous stage so in terminal when i print uh, i i inserted a print here inside the zip and it looks like this this picture here and I, the last one, we're going to iterate in our watch it event destruct. And we're going to check if uh, every ever change here. And we're going to check if the event that my system, uh, my system notificated, it was a right event. So if it is a right event, I'm going to insert the, the file name in the my channel that I pass it as a pattern my function okay so here we have our function to watch all the directories events this way uh, running every file change so when I when I type and I try to fix some file the command must run automatically my my file and tell me if it's it's okay or is it still broken here uh, is is my mind cli body and i create a channel okay uh, uh, a channel to to pass as a pattern to my watch event functions that i created in the previous stage i use infinite loop we're gonna understand better why I have to use infinite loop when we built the iterative mode, but uh, we're gonna use that to always keep running the exercise. And I create a go routine here because it's another process, and I wanted to make more things after the go routine like the iterative mode <laughs> and here inside we have a range in this channel so every time this channel is updated i i want to run the run next exercise comment and the third is built in the iterative mode and i can resume this step and buff your packager infinite loops switch case to choose the, the right command to run uh, with user inputs. This time, I'm gonna use the buff your packager. And this packager implements functionality for buffer data input and output. And we have to build the iterative mode. So we're going to need the reader types of this packager to, and methods to read the user inputs. So here I get the, the user input, read string, until the user tag press the enter, the enter key. And here I have the CMG share variable. And sir, the, here we have only a switch case to decide what uh, command I'm going to run with if if, if user inputs here. And if user type list, going to run this command, hint, going to run 
print hints, or maybe kit the program. And here is our MindCLN function. The, the step that you, we built. Yeah, so let's go to think about the challenge I face it. Um, the first one was really understand the, what I have to do. I think this is a good example that shows how communication right skills are very important because even I read the issue, this wasn't this, it wasn't really clear to me because how to build it because the first time I thought that I have to build uh, iterative modes like CLI flex. So when uh, the user type a flag after watch comment, I think it was to to enter in an iterative mode. Like type watch trace A, watch trace C. Uh, so it wasn't the what the project owner means to, to say about how to create a watch comment or iterative terminal. I really understand what I have to do after the repository owner showed me a video of how it works in Rust Linux. It's the same project, it's the same project but for the Rust language. So after watching it, I really understand what I have to do. And the second one, uh, the time to work on an open source project is difficult to manage. I have my personal schedule with tech communities, family, content production, and work-related studies. And it took me about three months to actually finish my contribution. I love to work on it, but I wish I could do it faster because when I come back to pick up where I left off, I often forgot what I was doing or thinking. So for my next my next contribution, I have to better organize my schedule to keep my constants and not forget anything. And the last one I faced concurrence problems and operational system notifications that we're gonna show you. I'm gonna show you now. Uh, this was my my problem. Here we have a file that I am I am editing and check pay attention here in this is this is mobile and the left we have a simple code that represents what we built until now. A channel, a function that receives the channel running in a go routine, another go routine, and a for iterating in this channel that I paste it to understand what what file which file was wa have changed so if a file is changed i want to print the file name here and after two seconds i want to finish finishing my my program so pay attention here i saved my file about one two three four five times and my watch it even functions only printed one and after it finished and check this one again one two i save it two two times my file and it pre printed only the finish so how channel works how it must works when i create a channel it receives the value, like this one, I created a channel with a uh, two length of buffer. I insert one, two, and I iterate over it to print it. So here is this print element, and here is that two, the last element that it passed to, to a variable. The channel must work with this. so. Every time I, I save a file change, it must insert in the channel. So if it, it isn't, isn't inserting the, 
even in my channel, I think, or my system notification isn't, isn't working very well, or maybe can, or I think it can mean a system with a system problem with my, my machine, with the M1 chip, or maybe my code. <laughs> But I faced this problem with a long, long time. And thinking in all the problems I faced or all the things I, I developed, I thinking what I learned with that. The first one is get feedback as soon as faster, talk to people, show your codes and ask what they think. Maybe they can see things you're not seeing or teach you better ways to do what you're doing. Understand the go flow to the bug and how channels works. I work with Go, but I don't write a lot of code that to use channel or handles with operational system notifications. So this project helped me a lot to understand how Go handles with this context. And open source, yes, <laughs> open source can help you a lot to understand of how the universe of technology works. It can turn a K in your head that you can also participate in discussions of tools that you use and you can create something new and create together with other people. It's, I think it is an active learning where you're looking for information on how to do it and then you apply it to practice, okay? So, If you can contribute to open source projects, I think I believe that will help you a lot. And thank you so much to watch, for watching my talk until here. And thank you for Conf42 for accepting my talk. And any questions or comments you have, I am at your disposal. You can find me on the networks as Lysleman underscore dev. And usually my feed, my posters is in Portuguese from Brazil, but I, I also talk in English. You can send me a message. Okay. See you. Bye. Take care. And thank you.